Do you use the site on LCS? Really? <laughs> That's sick. All right, excellent, excellent. Okay, all right. Uh, okay, so this is the pick ban order. Um, so we're going to close LEC now. Okay. Um, all right, so this is Draft Kingdom uh, or Draft Dystopia, whatever you want to call it, man. It's, it's, it's just going to be me flaming G2. And if you were <laughs> not on the stream, you didn't see me actually discuss the draft live. You didn't see me bet on Fnatic at, you know, three and a half or whatever to one odds that I did because the draft was so one-sided. Um, then maybe you'll think this is like hindsight. I think the, the most egregious thing is 4-5 uh, here. Like, Santa Silas is really bad here. Like, Kisante Silas is egregious. We continue. Andy, but it's not hindsight, Andy, because we've all discussed live. Anyways, um, B1 Vi. So, again, this is going to be me flaming the ever-loving shit out of G2, uh, mostly because you consider how good all of their players are, how much skill is on this team, and then they draft like this, as if while on the way to G, you know, LEC today, they went under an underpass and someone dropped a cinder block on their head. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> you open B1 Vi. <laughs> B1 Vi is a shit champion. Um, and the reason that it's so shit is because Vi only has one mode and one theme. This is, I mean, B1 Wukong is also pretty bad, but B1 Vi is like one of the worst things that you can do because she only has one mode. There's one mode, no, nothing else. Can she do other things? Could she peel for her ADC or something? Like sure, she could. But, like, it's not the same as, like, Wukong peeling with Cyclone. It's not the same as Wukong, like, you know, being able to, to, to create a lot of space, you know, with his clone and with his R and stuff like that. It's not the same as, like, Wukong being able to itemize as a bruiser and legitimately take out carries. Vi can't do that. Even when she itemizes bruiser, fair, fair, she fair. can't actually delete the carry the same way that uh, Wukong can. Fair, so, fair, okay, fair. B1 Vi already uh, a really big mistake because this is not a B1 champion. B1 champions have to be from the idea of B1 Vi, right? B1 Vi, it's like the idea of B1 Vi is that if you set yourself up for Zeri Lulu, as an example, right? Uh, even that is partially deep, right? But it's like if if you have a Zeri team, why people B1 Vi is to set up Zeri. And then if the enemy takes Zeri away, they go Lushanami, blah, blah, blah. That is like one of the draft structures that you see. But you're in a situation now where you pick Renata yourself, because I don't think Mickey wants to play Yumi or he doesn't want to play Lulu either, right? Uh, and that, I think, makes it inherently worse. Either really strong champions that can face a wide range of types of team, or wide different uh, variety of team compositions, or... I'm waiting for the day someone drops Morgana jungle into Vi. I'm waiting for this day. It's a multiflex champion, um, so that you you wait for further draft development. Vi is none of those. Um, response here ends up being uh, Rakan, and it ends up being Wukong. Now Zaya is also banned away. Now I don't like either of these two picks by Fnatic because I think that these two draft these two picks, yes, they can both be kind of mid rangey champions. Wukong still has the option to be disengagey. Rakan has the option to follow up on engage that Wukong might actually go on. Yeah, G two shouldn't play Zeri. I, like I, I I agree wholeheartedly with the idea that that G two shouldn't play Zeri, one hundred percent. Like. Mickey doesn't want to play Lulu. He didn't want to play Yumi. Like, and Han Samo and Zeri, it doesn't seem to be, like, real to me, you know? Powering the enemy draft. But in general, there's no, there's not enough of a consistent theme development right here um, for me to, to like something like this. Um, personally, like, yeah, I, I think, like, people, everyone and their mother has forgotten about Morgana. Um, I think that, like, oh. you know, early rotating, like, Morgana would just be a lot more valuable and stuff when, like, oh. letting the draft develop. Um, you know, early rotating. Hey, like, Morgana based Morgana and Jinx or Jinx or something like that, right? Um, would just be a lot better because you know uh, that Vi accompanying any sort of poke comp is just not going to be... A Here as well, I, I think you can hold the Renata and you can just pick Gragas. Like, just pick Gragas here. And Gragas is so strong into Rakan Wukong. You go Gragas Zeri, you drop support. You have 50 answers into Rakan, by the way. And you can adjust depending on comp. Gragas open, Niski! Yes, man! <laughs> Gragas open. Very good pairing. Um, and that would be the thing that, like, Jinx is weakest to. Other types of things that you could do is, like, Senna, com uh, Senna variations, right? Um, you can you can you can wait for developments like that. Um, you could take like Udir in the jungle would just be a lot better um, because it's going to be a lot <laughs> more, live a lot more stable. Um, and it plays against <laughs> everything that Vi can do. It just literally does it better. Yo, Yonitsky, um, can you explain this Pisky uh, meme to me? What what does Pisky mean? 
Um, I think things like that are, are going to be a lot better. <laughs> the Dean anyway, Shear maneuver. Um, so going, going forward. <laughs> I have no clue. Zeri okay. and Renata, I don't know why that's so thick. Zeri and Renata end up getting locked in on B2, B3. Now I just don't like Renata, honestly. I understand why people play Renata in Tarakan, but I think that you are so limited in what you do here on Renata, uh, when, you, when you slam Renata. I, I think that if they pick Gragas here and drop support, I think that they would have been a lot more flexible. I think via Gragas together is quite strong. And I think Gragas is so good into uh, Wukong and Rakan. Now, so. Desari and the Renata gets locked in before there's enough known information. And also, like, Lulu is so so much Renata better. Is actually coming in too early. Renata yeah, is agreed. a response to really crush a team composition because her pheromones are really, really, really strong versus particular Her pheromones? When those team compositions don't exist... Please tell me that the, the Renata ult is called pheromones because... <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird thing to call them. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me see. I need to. I need to know. Uh, pheromones. Damn. Damn. Yes, yeah, hostile takeover is the name of the ult. <laughs> pheromones. Unless, damn. He's selling perfume or some shit. <laughs> have a lot of incentive on the bailout to act as an anti-assassination tool but there's no development in fanatics draft there's no assassin stuff known French yet. Twitter, okay and there's no way of knowing whether or not her pheromones or her R or whatever I mean I joke I call it pheromones <laughs> okay no okay pheromones are gonna have value yet you're not pinching anything you're not preventing anything you're not pinching anything why is Renata coming out thank blind? you I do some why is she just coming out early doesn't make any sense now, Fnatic finds agreed, a agreed. very old pick, but a very good pick in the Sivir here. This is a champion that can resist the Renata Glask very good against the Vi, because again, Vi can't delete her even if Vi goes bruiser the same way that Wukong can. Sivir can kite back and Sivir outscales the Zeri. And then Sivir, because of the utility that she provides with her ultimate, plays against Zeri's like ranges to, to, to you know, have the ultimate and be able to go over walls. Sivir is uh, good here, better. I agree. So Sivir right now, really, really, really good. I would say at this stage... I think, though, Sivir is a good pick here, but there is some counterplay, right? You can play the, the Smite, and you can uh, latch on to Sivir, and I, I think that, that Zeri versus Sivir in terms of the scaling is not like black and white. I think the biggest issue for Zeri is that fa the fact that she doesn't scale so well with LDR, but it's not really relevant in this game. Age of the draft, Fnatic, for the most part, have it in the bag. Um, I, I, I would say this is already like 80-20 in, in, in this kind of an opening. I think it's very, very, very Fnatic favored with the way that you're going to play out the remainder of the draft. So now the follow-up bands end up being Asol, and there also is a Talia. Asol. Now, I think that you could actually take Asol as Fnatic in a situation like this, but maybe they don't want that much scaling on their team. I think if, if you want, like, I think Asol ban is good because in a situation... I think on, on, on 4 here, you want to end up on Azir, but I think that uh, picking a soul your, for yourself just gives the enemy team angles. I like I wouldn't want to play pick a soul 4 here and play into Cassio Vi. I think that's like just too hard. Doesn't matter that you scale better or do better in the game, I think picking a soul is just too hard. I think the fact that it's like, looking at this, banning Olaf and banning LB isn't completely crazy, right? Into your one, two, three, these are champions that can definitely do fine and well, right? But that's the issue, is that you want to ban Azir. Because Azir, you have the same issue against Azir. Really, really the same issue. It's like, Olaf is good into your one, two, three. And if your blind pick is supposed to be Kaysante, then yeah, you should, you should fucking uh, remove Olaf. But, but you are in trouble already. You are in big trouble already. Because this Renata pick is just GG, I think. It's just GG. There's, there's no coming back from that. Team composition. But I think that they could take a soul on R4. The question is, is does Humanoid actually play a soul? Now, yes, he does. You can take a soul here is, again, there's not enough reliable lockdown on Fnatic for him. And Miss Glask is also not super great. I, I disagree um, with being able to pick a soul on four here. There would need to be more information known. With the Sivir there already, and the fact that they're winning out on support and jungle in regards to how the two team comps are going to play against each other, I think a soul is a fine pick. I think banning um, Asol is good. They end up doing is they do a zero on It's R4. like Asol on blue side is definitely better than Asol on, on, on red because you want to fourth pick, fourth pick mid. You don't want to let the enemy get an Azir. 
but you can't pick ASOL yourself, but you can pick ASOL into your 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 pick on four. So I think ASOL ban is good. Four. Now, Azir and Sivir is a pretty iconic uh, pairing. Um, also, Azir, another champion that is actually somewhat good against, uh, you know, Ren Renata Glask, um, because he has the Shreema Shuffle, uh, or not the Shreema Shuffle, he has the, the, he has the Shreema Wall, right? Um, so with the current champions that Fnatic or G2 have right now, this is not easy access. To Another cool thing about Azir's interaction against Renata is that even if you get taunted, you don't hit with soldiers. Like, the, even if you get hit by Renata's ult, which should be... Uh, to any of these you know? champions. These three champions on B1 through B3, they have no reliable way to reach the opponents. Renata does not... Uh, if, if you only look at it from 1, 2, 3 versus uh, f 4, that's like... It's so hard to solve solve here on four five. Like you need to be able to blind pick GP here, and um, uh, like it's 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 terrible. A high enough value with her ultimate because a lot of these champions are not actually touching each other. Um, you know, at the very start of the fight, they might conjoin with one another once the fight actually commences. But that, by that point, I mean Miss Glask is not actually doing what you would want her to do. The follow up here ends up being Cassanti, and then a Silas comes in. The Silas makes no sense because, one, he has no ultimates that are actually any value to him. Uh, I'd say Rakanut is pretty damn good, but I think playing Sivir, like playing Silas into Azir, Sivir, Wukong is so fucking hard. I've never, ever believed that Silas is, is like, good into Azir. I've never believed that. Like, you need to, be, you need to get carried by your team. Uh, through your early game and then get ahead and then Silas wins everything, right? But isolated 1v1, if you play against good Azir, it's very hard. And playing against Sivir, like, the fact that Sivir can spell shoot one of your abilities already is is uh, really rough. Like, you don't have kill threat on her at all. And then Wukong, it just Wukong slams you. It's like, Wukong is a champion that has a lot of burst, uh, so that's like, w a lot of burst and the ultimate is not that great, you know? Silas can play silent with Azir, yeah, but it's just, it doesn't matter. Um, he's not going to be able to reliably get any flanks on these champions. The, the There's not good follow-up. The conversion of Silas... The conversion of Silas versus Azir is all about what happened in the early game. Uh, yeah, hey, hey, Vedius. Ari here? Ari would probably better than, be better than Silas, yeah? Kisanta's weird, too from Silas on like a Vi engage or anything, the bailout on Silas doesn't have a whole lot of value either. And now what is the team comp really doing? This is becoming very quickly a one damage threat, which is the Zeri, but the Zeri can't really deal damage because the enemy carries are already threatening to just gun her down and they scale harder than her. So it's really bizarre. The Silas ends up just being super random. It's completely out of left field. Um, and, and then the Cassanti comes in blind. Now, in a situation like this, I think that there's actually... Yeah, better uh, Caps, of course, is a very good Silas, but he's not going to do more than what the champion can do. Right? He's going to do more than you can do, but he's not going to be able to do more than the champion can do. Than Jax. Um, but, uh, obviously, Nar or Oscar, and in, I don't know how to say his ID, um, does not probably play like Garen. Garen is much better than Jax in a spot like this because his silence is just absolutely chaotic. He's going to be impervious in team fights. All of these champions will... Garen is actually Garen good. <laughs> I agree. Garen is really good. Yeah. So I actually this agree. Actually it's it's really good. <laughs> it's 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 terrible, game. Garen game. Garen with Sivir just means that you're always dead. It is. It is. Uh, it doesn't matter who you Garen is good. So I'm laughing, <laughs> but it's really based. Into the Kassanti. Because you have such a stable bot lane. But Jax is good too. Stable mid lane. Jax, is, Jax is good too. To get to 16. And Jax at 16 in a game like this, with his approach angles, etc., he's going to be way too tanky. No one's going to be able to bring him down. And then because for G2 has a one damage threat team composition, I mean, there's just, there's not enough. There's not enough that... that also, like, Renata can't do anything against Garen. And Azir are both such strong... But Jax is good, too. Jax is really good, too. One, if the other is still standing, the, you know, respectively, each one is still really good against all the members of, of G2. So the, the, the drafts here are really bizarre. So let's, um, let, let's go now to B4, B5, um, and then let's think about how, how can we salvage um, this current draft state. So here we can pick Gragas. Here, you have Bailout on Renata. Do you know what they pick here? Gragas, GP. That's the only way to make this remotely playable, in my opinion. 
But it's like blinding GP, like you can just go fuck yourself, you know? It's like there's something is coming for you, breathing down your neck and you're gonna hit your life. It's like if, if GP is the only if GP and Jace are the only two champions that can save your draft, then uh, you're in for a hard time most of the time. I still think like here picking Graga Smith is uh, is good, you know? Just go Graga Smith. The only problem you have thirty seconds to decide what to pick? No. <laughs> Yeah, you have the whole split to decide what to pick. <laughs> so it's uh, like, you, 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 you prepare your draft. Ori against this engage? No, no, no. You have to pick, you have to pick Gragoon. You have to pick Gragoon, I think. It's just a Gragoon game, really. Gragas is good into Azir. It's good into everything that is showing. You just pick Gragoon. But the problem is, is that you're sort of running into them and everything just feels really bad. So go Gragoon um, GP. You're not going to be able to go like Twisted Fate in a spot like this. Gragas GP. Um, I mean, it really... Or Corky. Just go Corky. Just go Corky and that's it. It's fucking Corky or Gragas. Like, you need to pick one of these, mate, I think. And Soul is banned. Aurelian Soul definitely would have been um, maybe a really good option. And the other problem that you're having right now is that your top laner has to be blind. Um, so if you're a top laner, to, to be blind here is also definitely very painful. Um, now, the thing is, is are, are you really going to try to pivot poke in a situation like this and go zigs or something um, against the Azir? I mean, ideally, that's what you would want to Bro, do. Bro, zigs, zigs is just corky with uh, bigger teeth. Have Let's B1, be honest. Uh, through B3 that we have, uh, <clears throat> if Azir is going to cause these kinds of problems for us. Now, they don't have a lot of reliable CC on the enemy team, but I think Kossadin is too nerfed um, in order to take Kossadin. Kossadin is garbage. Like so I don't think that Kossadin is really an answer. Um, Anivia, I think in a spot like this, you do just get outranged. You can't really play no, the no, game, no. so Anivia is not really an option either um, in a spot like this. I don't think that you can go like Seraphine. Um, unless like your, your top laner is just cracked out of his mind and he's willing to play like something, even if it's a disadvantageous matchup. Um, I don't think that you're going to be able to do something like that. And okay. Then again, because you have Bruiser. Seraphine kind of base. the jungler was different or the support was Seraphine different, kind of base. There would be a lot more options that you would have available. But I think at this point, you just need to actually sin and you need to play with the bailout and the Vi R. Um, that's the only thing that I can think of. So I think that you have to go unironically, um, Akali. Uh, probably in this situation, and then what do you actually end up going in top lane? So you have to go with Holly, um, I think, in this spot. And then in addition to a Akali, you need something else that can sort of part the veil and uh, make an engage. You might have to actually just like blind cled um, or something, because you, 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 you have to at least be on theme. Being on theme is probably the best chance that G2 actually has at winning the game. Trying to do any sort of pivots um, won't make any sense, but at least your champions, in addition to being on theme, they have to make sense against the enemy champions, right? I um, think I think I I kind of like the pivoting idea a little bit more here, just because it's like if if you if you pivot four five into the champs that are looking to outrange, I think that Renata actually inherently gets a lot more value. Um, and then I think that Vi can just hold her spells, you know, and just ult the Wukong when he goes, or ult the Raka when he goes, and you can play it like that, you know? So now you need another top laner that's going to end up being blind. Alternatively, what you could do is you could maybe try to go, like, Quirky. Yes! Um, you could maybe try to play, like, Quirky, and then you could try to, you know, blind GP and be willing to fall back. <laughs> We are um, the same. Really there we go. We are the same conclusion. And again, why do we now have Renata and why do we have Vaughn? Um, <laughs> this would allow you to potentially win the game. There we go. <laughs> now completely shifting your, your build around, which was originally Zeri, and you're now making it quirky and GP. And I don't like uh, the idea of doing something like that. So it, it's not something that I would personally um, suggest or, or you know recommend uh, G2 to do in a spot like this. I'm um, trying to think what I don't mind they this. could actually do. Um, in mid lane, I mean, if they have the Akali, um, I mean, there, I mean, there is that. Uh, they can't move Vi to top lane. You can't do any like Ivern Rengar type shenanigans or anything like that. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think realistically, it's probably like Akali Kled, and then just uh, you have to just play like that, and then that is that is terrible. I mean, in top lane, see, they're gonna end up choosing a tank, and you're gonna have the same no. Problem. They're not gonna pick a tank, bro. They're gonna pick. Uh, they're gonna pick Jax or Fiora, and they will make this Kled hate his life. <laughs> like, not picking a tank team, here. We're not picking a, a tank here. No, this Kled will not survive early game. <laughs> like, blind pick Kled. 
uh, with a tank in top lane, it is still going to be a little bit awkward. Yeah, Vega is fine. That's the more controlly aspect. So either you do the Akali Kled or you end up doing Vigar X. Okay, okay. I don't, I don't like the, the Akali Kled angle. I think uh, Vegar I like. Corky I like. Going that. Uh, Gragas, Corky. Gragas, Corky, Vegar was mid peak. And, and then you had to like pick GP or Renekton. Uh, like, I think that's the only way. That's the only way, guys.